Hello there, my dear friends. How's it going on this beautiful Sunday? It is absolutely breathtakingly beautiful here today in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Um, I am, uh, my heart is heavy on one side, guys, but I gotta tell you, I know how the story ends. I know what happens at the end of this life, amen? How's everybody doing out there today? Uh, please leave some comments if you if you have a chance. I want to invite you also to check out um, our website at cjorndorf.com. Um, there's some great videos, some great testimonies there. Updated version of the website. I think you're going to really, really enjoy it. Uh, but uh, would love to just uh, spend this time of worship, communion, and devotion with you for the next half hour or so. And um, so... Uh, thank you, Father, for this time that we have to be together. Thank you, God, for uh, bringing us all through this pandemic. And thank you, God, that uh, many of us are, are so optimistic in our spirits because of your word, Father, and because of your faithfulness to us so many times before in the past. And that, that just gives us, it, it strengthens our faith, Father, for the future and that you, you are going to remain in complete control and have your way in our lives. We love you. Thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, it's so good to see you. Hey, I want to invite you guys right now. I'm just going to give you a reminder. We are going to have communion together during the couple of songs of worship we're going to do together. Um, but please go ahead and grab those communion elements and be ready to partake of the body and the blood of Jesus. Uh, of course, we're not talking about a real body, real, real blood, but by faith this little cup of juice and um, this little portion of a wheat then become the body of Jesus and the blood uh, that he shed for the remission of our sins. Um, I invite you to, to participate in that communion time with us um, and uh, let's just open up with uh, a beautiful song. I love this place if I bear down in the breakdown in the middle of it. Don't be surprised. This song gets me right in my heart every time I sing it. And um, it's just such a, a powerful tool to get me there. And um, I've learned as a worship leader, as a musician, that if it moves me, it's uh, hopefully going to do something with you. All right. <laughs>
like to just give God thanks today for the, the blessing of his son as he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Uh, Jesus was dining with the disciples before his crucifixion and um, he passed around a loaf of bread and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. It's a sign of the new covenant. And uh, today, Lord Jesus, we recognize and we remember what you did for us, the breaking of your body as you were whipped at the post, you were uh, scourged, you took uh, the cat of nine tails, you uh, the, took the crown of thorns, you took so much uh, rejection and you took so much sin in your own body. We just wanna say thank you today. We remember and we say thank you. Jesus, for your amazing sacrifice. Let's eat it together. Amen. And then it says he took the cup and he gave thanks. And then he sent it around the table. And then he said, this is my blood. My blood of the New Testament that was given for you. I've shed it now for the, the payment in full for all sin. And I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for that amazing gift of your blood that washes us, it cleanses us, it covers us. Thank you today that we have fullness of joy and we have eternal life because of your blood, because of the breaking of your body and because of this, this representative of your blood. We partake now in Jesus' name. Somebody needs healing out there today, and I believe you're receiving that right now. Healing, healing, healing. The Bible says that healing is the children's bread. You know, there's no other item on our table that's more common for every meal than bread is. And I believe that the healing of the Lord should go automatic with every meal, with every day, healing spirit, soul, and body. The Lord, I believe, is in the healing business today. Marriages, child relationships, uh, interfamily relationships, family uh, relationships with friends, church people, just brothers and sisters that you uh, are not getting along with well. Let the Lord heal that today in the name of Jesus. 
And you know what? I just want to continue with that. May the Lord touch our nation today with his healing grace. There's nothing that can solve our issues but the love of God, the power of God. We're going to be talking in just a few moments about some practical insight uh, into these crazy events that are happening around our country, worldwide, globally. Uh, we're going to get into the scripture in just a few moments. But I want to do this song with you guys. I am going back a couple of decades. I am going to go ahead and admit it. But this song is so beautiful. Bibles uh, and go with me please to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I uh, have been just as awake as anybody else I believe uh, the last few days and um, I want to just say that in continuation what we were mentioning just before that last song you know, there's, um, <laughs> the only thing that's going to help us is God. The only thing that has that kind of worldwide potential uh, that can touch and change the hearts of mankind. And that's what we really need, isn't it? Uh, we need the love of God to be supernaturally given to us. And um, I know that his love for mankind is here. I know that his love for us as individuals. But how do we get things to change uh, where we are? And you know what? I've come to the conclusion that I can't do a thing about people in other cities. I can't change the hearts of, uh, of all the officers out there. I can't change uh, the hearts of rioters, looters, and it doesn't matter what color they are. It, it's, it's just, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, I can't do a whole lot of things for them. There are a certain amount of people in my life that I can encourage, uh, that I can speak into their hearts, their lives. They actually will take a few moments and listen uh, to what the Holy Spirit might be saying through my life. But there's only a certain amount that you and I can actually do. So today I want to just look at 1 Corinthians 13 and uh, I want you to see what you and I can do. All right? Uh, it says here, I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible and uh, I love that translation, by the way. It is my absolute favorite. I love to memorize. If I'm going to memorize scripture, I love to memorize King James. I just think it's beautiful. Uh, but as far as learning and understanding and having a, a good grip on what the writer is actually trying to say, I love the Amplified. So here we go. 1 Corinthians 13, it says, If I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, that reasoning, intentional, 
somebody out there say intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us. If I talk in, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but I have not that love, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. A noisy gong or a clanging, clanging symbol. Uh, I remember a couple of things that I will mention right now. Uh, remember the gong show? Anybody out there old enough to remember the gong show? When that thing went off, everybody heard it. <laughs> it was loud. I also remember one of the things in a, a Christmas song called Sleigh Ride. And there's a place in there, da 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 right? Um, I remember that gong. I remember that that clanging cymbal. And, you know, if you can just uh, think of one of your most romantic moments with the person you love and uh, imagine somebody walking up to the table or uh, to the chair where you're both sitting and hitting a gong at that moment. Um, that's what it's like for us to think we're something special, but we don't have the love of God in operation in our lives. We're nothing but a loud gong or a clinging cymbal. It says in verse 2, If I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting divine will and purpose, and understand the secret truths and mysteries and possess all knowledge, and I have sufficient faith, if I have sufficient faith so I can remove mountains, and but I don't have the love of God, God's love in me. I am nothing, a useless nobody. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned or in order that I may glory, but I have not God's love in me, I gain nothing absolutely nothing. Verse 4 says, love endures. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love is never envious nor boils over with jealousy. Love is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. Brothers and sisters, I feel like, you know, uh, I mentioned a moment ago, we cannot control the actions of other people all I can do is I can say on my property line outside this window, around the side of the house, around the back of the house, the other side of the house, I am telling the world today that my family and I, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and we will love those that come into our lives. We will display and we will not only talk about the love of God, but we will show and we will act in a spirit of love and kindness. That's all I can do. All I can do is proclaim that over my property, over these airwaves today by this camera. I can say that over uh, our social media, we're going to love people. All I can do is teach my children, my grandson, to love people people unconditionally unconditionally and that is the greatest way we can emulate Jesus in fact he said by this shall all men know that you are my disciples you're my followers you're my disciplined ones if you have love one to another love to another in other words we don't just talk about it we just don't say it in private we show love to each other we give each other that love. I wish I could turn the clock back and I wish I could change uh, the crazy things. Uh, Aubrey, gentleman by the name of Aubrey, uh, senseless, stupid. What happened to that young man? Uh, with this officer and George Floyd, come on. That is absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous that it happened. It's a travesty of God's love. God loves all of us, and if we're not going to operate in God's love, we are just a clanging symbol. We're a loud gong. 
Nobody listens to a thing we have to say if we don't demonstrate God's love. Verse number five here in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. Love is not conceited, it's not arrogant, and it's not inflated with pride. It's not rude, it's not unmannerly, it does not act unbecomingly. God's love in us does not insist on its own rights and its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. Uh-oh. And it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. That needs no explanation. That goes straight to the quick, <laughs> straight to the bone. Love does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but it rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes and fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Love, in verse eight, love never fails. It never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary. It's incomplete and it's imperfect. And our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary and incomplete and imperfect. But when the complete and the perfect total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void, and superseded. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I behaved as a child. That was just CJ. Uh, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I've become a man, I am done with the childish ways and have put them aside. I remember uh, as my children were little, I was surprised at how quickly the little smallest thing could cause contention between them. Uh, a bite of food or a piece of candy or um, the smallest little toy. And doesn't it seem like uh, the same thing happens at different times in our lives? Uh, the older we get, uh, some, some people haven't grown out of that. And <laughs> the smallest little thing uh, can start something big. And I uh, just listen to the scripture. It's beautiful. When I was a child... I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I've become an adult, a man, I am done with the childish ways and I have put them aside. For now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality in a riddle, as in a riddle or an enigma. But then when perfection comes, we will see in reality and face to face. Now I know in part, imperf imperfectly, but then I will know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by the Father. Verse 13 says, And so faith, hope, and love abide. Faith, the conviction and belief, uh, respecting man's revelation to God and divine things. Hope, joyful, confident expectation of eternal salvation and love. The true affection of uh, for God and man growing out of God's love for us and in us. These three, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Uh, the way that the world will know that we are truly the disciples of Jesus is if love is demonstrated in our hearts, our lives, our expression, our words. Uh, Let's let God's love be evident in our lives, my friends. Um, today, I just want to end 
with uh, a scripture in 1 John. And it says this, 1 John chapter 4, just going to be here for a few more moments. Uh, it says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love springs from God. Love is from God, and he who loves his fellow man is begotten, born of God, and coming progressively to know and understand God, to perceive and recognize and get a better and clearer knowledge of him. Verse 8 says this, For he who does not have love has not become acquainted has not become acquainted with God, nor does he even know him. This actually says, does not and never did know God, for God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God. When I was a child, we sang this song. Some of you remember it right this moment. In fact, when I said 1 John 4, it came back to you <laughs> because that's just the way our memories work. 1 John 4, 7 and 8. We're going to sing this right now. It's uh, so much of a fun song, but the truth of this song is so powerful today. Keep getting a few messages here. One moment. All right, here we go. Beloved, let us love one true is that though he that loveth not knoweth not God brothers and sisters all we can do is train our children train our grandchildren let our homes be a haven of God's love and if we purpose in our hearts and our lives to make that the central theme of what it looks like to be a Christ follower people are gonna notice people are gonna see it they're gonna feel it and I can't help but want to be in God's love. I can't help to, uh, I can't help but want to be with people who exhibit the love of God. And I'm encouraging you to do the same thing in your life today. It's such a blessing uh, to see people respond to God's love. Let's pray together. If you need healing in your body today, if you need a uh, financial miracle in your life today, I'm just gonna pray right now for God's power to be released in your life, uh, let's just bring our cares to the Lord, all right, in this closing prayer. Father, thank you so much for this time we've had to be, able to, be uh, to be together, uh, to share communion together, a little worship, your word, Father, about the most powerful uh, characteristic of your spirit, God, your love. May it be our love today, Father, may it be obvious to others that we have changed. There is something different about us and it is the love of God that is absolutely undeniable about all of us. In Jesus' name, God, I'm asking you today for miracles in my brothers and sisters' lives, financial miracles, relationship miracles. Father, if anybody is sick in their body out there, Father, I know that Jesus took stripes on his back for our healing. By his stripes we are healed. It says in Isaiah 53, and in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, by his stripes, Peter, uh, looking back to the cross, by his stripes, you were healed. Past tense, already done. The price has been paid. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. We receive it all now. Thank you for what you offer to us, Lord. 
Thank you for the amazing miracle of salvation. Thank you for the miracle of your presence. We love you and we thank you for being with us today. In the name of Jesus and everybody out there saying a loud amen, amen. Awesome. So good being with you all today. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you soon. All my best.